What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to detect or classify breast cancer in Python using machine learning. So let us get right into it. So let us get started with some basics and the first thing that we need to do is we need to install a couple of external libraries that we're going to use to load the data set that we're going to use to pre-process the data, to uh, train a model, to evaluate a model, to visualize results. We're going to need a couple of external libraries for that. And in order to install those, we open up a command line, so CMD on Windows or the terminal on Linux and Mac. And then we type pip install, and we're gonna need numpy, we're gonna need pandas, we're gonna need matplotlib, we're gonna need scikit-learn for the machine learning and for the data set. And optionally, you can also install Seaborn, which I'm going to use to plot a correlation heat map. I'm saying optionally because we're not gonna, uh, you, you don't have to use it because that's not the focus of today's video to plot a correlation heat map. I'm just gonna do it on the, on the site. Um, the main focus is on getting data, pre-processing it, and then training a model and doing some predictions or evaluating the model. So for those things, we're gonna need those libraries and this is gonna be an additional library that we're going to use for a more advanced visualization. So once we have that, we're going to start by saying from sqlearn.datasets import and we need the load breast cancer function. Now at this point, I think I need to mention, I think it goes without saying, but I need to mention that this video is not medical advice. So I'm not claiming that you can um, use this machine learning model that we're going to build today to do actual medical work. This is just programming advice, so don't take this as medical advice. The basic idea is that we're going to have a data set and I can load this here into the script by just saying data equals load breast cancer and then I can just print data. And the basic idea is that we have a data set uh, with certain information about tumors and we need to say if these tumors are malignant or benign, basically bad or evil or harmless, you could say. I think uh, this is kind of what, what this means. Um, and to see what all this data is about, we can actually go and say data.keys to see what kind of keys we have here. And we have the data itself, which is the information that we need to do the prediction. Then we have the target, which is the prediction, zero or one or malignant or benign. Um, then we have some stuff that I'm not gonna look at. And then we have target names and feature names. Target names basically malignant, benign, and feature names basically means um, the features that we have. So we can actually go ahead and say print data and then we're gonna get the feature names and we can also do the same thing for the target names. So target names, feature names. And you can see here that the feature names are mean radius, mean texture, mean perimeter, uh, mean area, and a bunch of other things. And then the target names are malignant benign. So we use all these things here, all these measures. So we can go ahead, if we have the necessary equipment, we can get such a tumor and we can measure all these things. And once we have them, we can use them um, to make the prediction, or we want to be able to use them to make the prediction. So essentially, you could say from a machine learning perspective, the features are the x values and the targets are the y values. And because of that, we're going to say now that x equals data, and then data and data contains basically all the featured data without the column name. So those are the column names, you could say and data data is essentially just are the numerical values that belong to these columns and y is just going to be data target. So now we have this data, but usually in machine learning, what we do is we split into training and testing sets. So we don't just want to get the data and then train them all. And then we have a model. We want to see also if we train them all on some part of the data, how well does it perform on unseen data? And for that, we're going to say from sqlearn.model selection import train test split. And then we're going to say now, x underscore train x underscore um, x underscore test y train and y test is going to be equal to train test split x y and the test size is going to be 0 0.2 indicating that we use 20% for testing 80% for training we take 80% of the data we train a model based on those 80% and then we try to see how well it performs how good the predictions are if we apply it on 20% um, of the initial data, which is the testing data set. Now, all we need to do here 
um, to actually build such a model once we have the data is we need to just say from sklearn dot and now we can choose a model that you want it should be a classification model so you can go with logistic regression you can go with a uh, support vector classify you can go with a neural network if you like I'm just going to use a simple k neighbors classifier so I'm going to say from sklearn dot neighbors we're going to import the k neighbors classifier. you can also use random forest and maybe in fact you're going to get better um, better results by using something like a decision tree or random forest classifier um, and of course you can also tweak hyperparameters which is a bit more advanced so this video here is targeted mainly at machine learning beginners because this is a quite easy task um, so we're just going to use a plain k neighbors classifier and we're going to say that CLF equals a K neighbors classifier. And now all we need to do in order to train this classifier on the data is we need to say CLF dot fit X train and Y train. This basically means that we take the data, um, basically a train test split takes the data and then randomly picks 80% out into the training data. So into X train and Y train, and then the rest, um, the 20%, the remaining 20% are, um, y test and x test and now we build that classifier we train it on the training data and now we have this classifier that is able to make predictions this is already happening all behind the scenes we don't implement this from scratch and if we now want to know okay how well does this model perform on unseen data on x test and y test what we do is we just say print and then clf dot score and we pass x test and y test and was, what this basically means is that it's going to look at the test data it's going to make a prediction and it's going to say okay is this prediction the same as the y test prediction so it's going to look at the first data row and it's going to say okay based on this i predict that this is malignant or benign then it's going to compare with the y test so it's going to compare with the actual um with the actual truth. So is this malignant or benign? And then it's going to say, okay, was this a correct one or not a correct one? Um, not a correct prediction. And then in the end, we're going to get a score, which is the accuracy, how much percent of our predictions were true. So we can run this now. And we can see here 91%. Now, if I run this a couple of times, we're going to get different results 92, uh, 92, 95, 94, 92, 96, 94. So you can see we get different results because we do a different split every time. We can also fixate uh, or we can also fix that uh, random state by just saying random state equals and then a number, for example, 10. And then we're always going to get the same split. So we're also going to get the same result, 0 0.921. Um, now this is how you do that. This is how you evaluate the model. And now all you need to do theoretically to actually um, predict new information is you take all your medical tools. Obviously, we cannot do this on the computer. Now we don't have an actual tumor to look at. But if you have a tumor and you have the measuring devices as a medical professional, you measure all these features. So you look at the features, like what did we have mean radius and asymmetries and all that. You take these measures, you put them in a document, you write them down. And then what you do is you go and say CLF dot predict, and then you feed in here the x new data which is the data that you have. So let's go ahead and generate some random data so that you can see how you would do a prediction once you have data. Now, of course, if you have the actual data, if you do the measurements, you're not going to generate random values. So you would do something like x underscore new equals and then in a list, you would pass all the values. So you could go ahead and print data feature names again. And when we run this now, what's the problem here? Okay, let me just remove that. Uh, you would do that and you would see here the individual features, you would do the calculations, you would do the measurements, whatever you do. And for each one of those, you would say, okay, x new equals, and then you have a list here. And you would say, okay, the mean radius is I don't know, I'm going to pick now any value 3.4 mean texture 1.2. I don't know, you just fill up these values with uh, with the values that you calculated or measured as a professional, or you take them from somewhere else if you have the data already. Um, and you put them in a list like that, or you load them from a file. And usually you want to use NumPy array. So we're going to say NP dot array. And we're going to turn that list once we have it into an array. And of course, for that, we need to import NumPy. So import NumPy as NP. 
Um, and once you have 30 values, you essentially just feed them into the predict function and you get a result. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to also import here random and we're going to say that we want to do random dot sample and we're going to use the range zero to 50. For example, we're going to take five values from there, uh, not five, sorry, 30 values because 30, we have 30 features. Um, and you can see how many features we have by just saying length of feature name. And then you um, get 30 as a result here. So he would generate now 30, um, 30 random values. So meaningless values, essentially, but if we have a list of 30 values, in practice, of course, not meaningless, we go ahead and we say print CLF dot predict and then we pass a list. Why do we pass a list? Because usually we predict multiple values at once. So we don't just pass this single instance into the predict function, we pass a list containing that instance. So x new, for example, uh, and in this case, it would say yes, it's malignant, uh, or actually one was benign, right? I think one was benign. So it would has have the class one. And to figure out which one this is, you can just go ahead and say, uh, data. And then what was it target name, right? Target underscore names index, whatever we get out of this year. And I think we need to actually say zero because I think we got a list as a result. And then you see benign. Okay, so this is how you do a basic prediction. Now, what we can also do is to make things a little bit easier for us, we, we can visualize certain things. And this is what I said with optional add on because that's essentially here, we're already done with the main topic of the video, we load the data set, we train a model, we evaluate it, and then we make predictions, this is all it is, but I want to show you a little bit more um, interesting stuff that you can do with a pandas data frame and with correlations and with a visualization uh, using a heat map. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the data and we're going to turn it into a pandas data frame. So we're going to actually need to import pandas by saying import pandas as PD. Um, and essentially, what we want to do is we want to define the columns. So we want to have a data frame, which is like an Excel sheet, you can think about it like that. And you have the columns, which are the features with a column name at the top with the values as rows. And then you have the target, which is the prediction like, uh, or the classification malignant benign. And this is what you want to have. And then you want to calculate the correlation. So which feature influences this final feature the most and why and how uh, negatively or positively a lot or just a little. And for that, we're going to start by defining the column data and the column data is essentially going to be uh, taking the NumPy arrays and concatenating them because now we have x, y, but we actually want to have one um, big array with all the columns because the target is also a column. So we're going to say uh, np dot concatenate. And we're going to concatenate the data, uh, data and the data target. Now I'm not sure if this is going to work just like that. I think we're going to have some issues. Let's see column data. Yeah, we have some issues. So what we need to do here is, first of all, um, specify axis equals one. But I think that's not going to solve the problem. Uh, got multiple values for argument axis. Oh, I think I'm passing I should pass this as a list, right? That's not the problem. There you go. Okay, so now we have a different problem, we choose axis one, we want to merge these two, but they have different dimensions. So what we can do here is we can actually say, um, colon and none, because this basically just has one uh, such one such column, whereas here we have 30 columns. And in order to solve this, we can just take uh, this one column and concatenate it into the other one or with the other one into a new NumPy array. So here you can see now that we have the features that we had before. And here in the last row, you can see only zeros and ones, which are the classifications malignant or benign. And now in order to get the column names, we're going to say, 
Uh, do we need an NP concatenate for this one? I'm not sure. We're just going to use it. NP concatenate and we're going to take the data uh, feature names and we don't want to get the target names because remember we have one column with zeros and ones. We don't have two columns, malignant and benign. We just want to have one column for the actual classification. So we're going to add to this a list with class. I think this should work. I'm not sure, but I think this should work. And now we're going to say DF equals PD data frame. And we're going to add here the column data and the column names are going to be columns equals to column names. And then we're going to print the data frame and see if this worked. No, we had a problem because um, be Oh, we're concatenating, I don't need to add. There you go. Now it works. So now we have Maybe we should use a lower ca uh, lowercase c for consistency here. But you can see here we have mean radius, mean texture, worst fractal dimension, and then class 0 or 1. And those are now all numerical values. So what we can do easily now, and this is the plotting of the correlation heat map, is in pandas, in order to get the correlations, we can just say dot core like that. So I can go ahead now. And you can see here the correlations. Now we have a lot of uh, columns in between here, but we can see the correlations between the individual features. Uh, so we have two features compared with each column and row. And of course, if the feature is compared to itself, it has a correlation of one, meaning that it's the exact same thing. Um, zero would be completely random, negative one would be completely opposite, and everything in between is a tendency, you could say. And this can now be used to visualize a heat map. So we go ahead and we import seaborn as SNS and we also import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And what we do now is we essentially say SNS.heatmap and we take DF correlation. So we can delete that as the input here. We can choose a color map. I I think I usually go with what was it cool warm? Was it like that? I'm not sure. Um, Annot is equal to true to get some annotations. And then we want to say Annot underscore keyword. So KWS equals and then uh, font size eight. And then we should say PLT type layout to get a good layout and then PLT show to get the final result. I hope I did everything correctly here. There you go. So now we can increase this. I think my camera is going to block this for the most part. Um, so I don't know where my camera is exactly I currently I only have one monitor, so I cannot look it up. Um, but essentially, what you see here, I hope you can see the whole thing is we have the features on the left, we have the features on the bottom, at least the numerical features. Um, and we compare those. So you can see here in the middle, we have the diagonal of once again, the feature compared with itself, it's always gonna have the same movement. Um, and then you can see also some more negative stuff. So the more blue something is, or the more dark blue something is, uh, the more negatively it is correlated. So if some feature rises, and another falls at the same time, roughly, that is a negative and inverse correlation. If two features rise and fall roughly the same, not exactly because that would be one, but if they have roughly the same tendencies, they are positively correlated. So something like 0, 091 here is an almost one correlation or 097 even, which basically means there is some difference, but all in all, it's essentially the same thing, or at least kind of the same thing. Um, so for example, the worst radius and the mean radius are highly correlated. As you can see, it makes sense. The only thing that is interesting for us now is the class because we don't care about all these features. They're going to have some correlations or not. Um, the important thing for us is how do we predict the class? Now, remember that zero means that the tumor is malignant. So bad and one means benign, which is good for us, uh, or for the patient. So, Essentially, a negative correlation means that when a certain value rises, the class falls. So in this case, when the mean radius rises, this leads to the class falling. And in this case, this would mean that it goes closer to zero, which means closer to malignant, which is bad. So the higher the radius of the tumor, 
the more likely it is um, malignant. And we can see here a couple of features. Now, if we have something like 0, uh, 8, and I think that not all features are displayed because we don't have enough size or because the layout is not enough. Uh, I think if we disable maybe the tight layout, we can actually see more of the features. Is that the case? Uh, not really. Now there, I, I'm sure there's some settings to to do this uh, a little bit better. Um, but essentially, again, what you see is that some values, some features are having a pretty low correlation. For example, this one here uh, has 0 0.06 or something. So it's basically irrelevant for the prediction, whereas some of them are highly negatively correlated. You can see that none of those has a positive correlation or a significant positive correlation, which means that uh, every feature that we have here is basically a negative feature. The more this feature occurs, the more likely the tumor is actually malignant. And it's better for all these features to be smaller, at least numerically. Um, this is just some analysis here that's quite interesting to look at, because as a result of that, you can, for example, throw away this feature, this feature, this feature, this feature, and focus on the most important features to make the classifications. Uh, if you want to optimize the process, uh, and yeah, this is how you detect or predict or classify breast cancer in Python. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.